everyone. Uh, welcome yet again to another uh, Overrated. I'm Michael J. O'Connor. James Flutie. Yes, and uh, and today we've got kind of a, an, ex, an extra special episode. Mm. Um, we, uh, this is about the summer that Mikey spent working at that bicycle shop. Yeah, <laughs> where I learned a lot about love and a little about life. <laughs> Um, no, today we're talking about Mikey's first celebrity crush. Yeah. Well, um, okay. <laughs> Jerry Lewis. Yes, the great, the great Jerry Lewis, uh, who passed passed away last week. And uh, James brought up the idea of maybe doing an episode just about him, and I thought it was great. Um, let me ask you before we get started: Were you a fan of of Martin and Lewis or Jerry Lewis's movies in general? Uh, Yes, I, w- I would put myself in the yes column. If someone tested me, I would fail right. on on trivia. Uh, I liked him when I was young, and I liked Martin and Lewis when I was young. Mm-hmm. So uh, I can I can sort of pull from the well right. of when I was very young, but it's it's a pretty it's a pretty shallow well because it's been many many years. Right? Um, yeah, I I I found out about Martin and Lewis especially later on. Weirdly enough, I watched a made-for-TV movie uh, about them, <laughs> um, <laughs> starring um, what's the guy's name from Will and Grace? Uh, Sean something. Uh, oh, I don't know. Yeah, Sean. Uh, was he Jerry Lewis? He played Jerry Lewis. Yeah. Okay. And, and uh, Makes sense. It, yeah, it actually it was a pretty pretty good movie, and uh, their story is pretty fascinating. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, I, th- I thought they were hilarious. Um, I thought they were really funny. Here's something I found out. Yeah. And, and since you, you actually watched it growing up, you might be as surprised as, as I was to learn this. Uh, Jerry Lewis is taller than Dean Martin. Really? Yeah, by like a couple inches. Huh. And so they used to just have him sort of hunch over and they put lifts on Dean Martin and they like cut... <laughs> that is so shoes. Yeah, so that's where you get this idea that, that Dean Martin is actually like a half a foot taller right. than Jerry Lewis. Right. That he is- was actually referred to as the little one, if I remember correctly. This little guy over here, they used to do that all the time. <gasps> oh yeah, that's so that's so well yeah, they always played on his <laughs> mm-hmm. his uh you know community stature. Totally, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh that's, that's so weird, yeah. Because you really <laughs> do think of them. I mean, if I was to draw a picture of them. He would be very small, you know. That's yeah. that's yeah. right, right. <laughs> that's so weird. Um, yeah, I I went back and watched some of their bits, dude, and it's just it's pandemonium. It is it's crazy. Um, mm-hmm. One of the things that I heard is, uh, and you know, uh, this could obviously be exaggerated, as so many stories like this are. But uh, it was that um, they were put together by some manager and uh, and. Within a week, they you couldn't get a ticket to their show. They wow. they had a, a room in Las Vegas, and and it, it their reputation grew that much that it was became impossible to even even see them. And they had no material. You know, they just they just <laughs> fucked around. <laughs> I, I, that's one of the things I remember from uh, from them, and also from a fair amount of vaudeville back then. Yeah. Is the sort of off the cuff feel that so much of it had yeah, and how they would just sort of scream and yell Jerry Lewis is leaving the stage oh. and coming back and um, also I remember uh, distinctly in a, in a biography about them years again years ago uh, how much money they were making at one point oh. and it actually showed Jerry Lewis just throwing cash out of the Jesus. window literally <laughs> and these crowds of people below us are going like oh my god take money <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ <laughs> Um, I mean, it makes sense, dude. They were huge. They were huge. You know, they were, and they were only together, you know, 10 years. But there's a great, if you get a chance, I don't know if you stumbled upon it, but it's a, it's a Bob Hope and Bing Crosby, like, sp- comedy special, you know, that they would do. And, uh, and they bring out Martin and Lewis, and they never come back on stage because they, Martin and Lewis are physically restraining them not letting them come back on ripping up the sheet music going and 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 you know uh conducting the band it's it's just crazy you know and it's pure it's anarchy <laughs> it's crazy and i can see how, how people had never seen anything like that before 
yeah, that is. Um, I think it it it, it shows. <laughs> A different kind of Hollywood that seemed to exist a long time ago, where if you were talented and had a draw, uh, you could just do whatever the fuck you wanted right. and get away with it. Yeah. Now, there's a little bit less of that, or maybe even a lot less of it, I guess I could, but from what I've heard people say, is that now there's this sort of producer can say, you know, like, yeah, there's a lot of talented people. We don't need your shit. Yeah. Like, if you throw a bunch of crap, right. we'll just get someone else who's also hilarious, who also can sing. This isn't. Or we'll get someone who isn't talented and just make them famous. Make them talented. We have that ability. Right. <laughs> yeah, for sure. For sure. I mean, it, it is much more... Well, and it's much more about um, who you are off stage now. Because you, everyone has that access. Everyone gives everyone that yeah. access. Yeah, that might be very, Yeah, that's a very good point. You know, people love we, Chris, we, Chris Pratt because he shows up at... He's showing up at children's hospitals and... You know, I mean, I mean there's... A, that, I'm not <laughs> belittling that that asshole, but, you know, <laughs> but that's part of the that's part of the whole the whole game. Whereas you know, I think before, mm. I think there's no question that Dean Martin was a fucking asshole. <laughs> you know, that, that, um, there's 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 certainly a good amount of um, there's uh, stories on both ends with yep. Jerry Lewis oh, yeah. as well. Oh yeah, there are stories where Jerry Lewis is doing things that are unbelievably nice. And there are things where they talk about Jerry Lewis just being a tyrant and, yep. and incredibly mean. Yep. He was certainly, um, I think it wouldn't be out of the question to say he was difficult. By, did you, by any mm-hmm. chance, a little bit before he died, there was a uh, interview he did for, I think, Vogue magazine, something like that, where he just mm-hmm. gives like one word answers. Did you just happen to say that? <laughs> Jeez, no. it's, it's, man, it's seven minutes and you, I mean... Good good luck getting through all seven minutes. It is so awkward because this guy is clearly he doesn't want to be there. You know, they mm-hmm. set up like a camera in his office and this guy's like, so uh, why is it that you feel um, to be to be fair to Jerry Lewis? This guy's asking ridiculous questions. He's like, yeah. why do you feel the need to still be working at your age? Yeah, exactly. And he's like, Why? And that's the answer, you know, like, and and the guy would be like, well, you know, um, so many of your contemporaries didn't work later on, uh, in their lives, you know, like Bob Hope and blah, blah, blah. And he's listening to all these these people who are dead, by the way. (laughs) Hey, Bob Hope stopped working a little while ago. (laughs) What's up with that? (laughs) But he just says, no. And it's, it's, dude, it's so hard. And this poor guy. So he, you know, clearly I think it's pretty obvious that if that he he did not suffer fools gladly, I suppose yeah. would be a good way to put it. Um, yeah, I wonder. I wonder. I remember hearing an interview with Jerry Lewis, and, and he was talking about the Martin and Lewis, and he said uh, that the the uh, the work arrangement with him and Dean Martin was I did all the work. And Dean Martin played golf, right. and he was very. And Dean Martin was very happy with that arrangement. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard. I've heard the same. It's funny that I've heard the same thing. He said uh, that. Um, he said, you know, we we had a, a very equal partnership. You know, I wrote everything, I directed everything, I choreographed everything, and Dino drank. <laughs> very similar uh, yeah. I'll, bet, I'll bet it's somewhere well, and, and and one of the things that I found really more remarkable about Jerry, about Jerry Lewis and I think uh, not a lot of people maybe know this was how much he did take control of so many of his movies yeah. he wrote directed starred and composed the music to a fair amount of his films really that's crazy yeah I had no idea so, like Chaplin yeah you know like he was he was he actually invented something that is used today with camera operation because he wanted to be able to see his own work. He invented the little like daily screen where he really? could see the film as it was going. Oh, that's wild. Yeah. Huh. And he was given some awards by camera operators. Crazy. He's got two different uh, stars on the Hollywood walk of fame, one for television, one for movies. Really? Huh? Yeah. I mean, uh, he was a, it seemed like he was a workhorse. He seemed like a guy who wanted, constantly was working and, and really put himself into it. Yeah. And uh, as is evidenced, uh, did you get a chance? Did you watch uh, Max Rose? I did. Okay, yeah, me too. I watched it, watched it last night. Um, that movie came out, what, 2014, I think it said? 2013? 13. Yeah, just a few, just a few years ago. Mm-hmm. 
and I I like I really liked, liked it. I thought it was a cool movie. I um, I thought he was great in it. I thought he was great. Yeah, yeah. It was. Um, uh, it didn't work for me entirely. It was sad, but um, <laughs> it was sad. But uh, the 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 way they did a lot of cutbacks and the sort of over explaining certain concepts, yeah. like the the finding the date, yeah. and I just felt like they didn't need to have him reiterate that he was looking for a date. Um, but he was great in it. Dane Stockwell was great in yeah. it. Um. I just, I, I, just some of the choices with uh, the the editing and the camera work, uh, sure. and also uh, so many of the scenes were about ten seconds long. I know it's weird. Um, there wasn't a lot of great dialogue in it, but the acting was fantastic, and I thought it was a really cool um, concept for a film. Is this guy sort of having to to come to grips with? perhaps the most meaningful thing in his entire life was, was a lie. Right. Or, or as he, he saw it as such. Also, I, I felt like there was no need to make him a musician. And <laughs> yeah, not at all. Right. <laughs> that kind of seems like something he, he wanted. He could have been a cartoonist. He could have been a, like a Bible salesman. Totally. It would have been the exact same film. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> all he had to do was go out of town once. Yeah, that was that's it. all he needed. Yeah, uh, well, yeah, that kind of seems like something he wanted. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Um, <laughs> boy, I tell you though, not funny. <laughs> <laughs> Just about the least funny I also, Lewis movie. Yeah, I also it made me a little uncomfortable when they'd have the bad jokes because I'm like, yeah. are they making fun of them? I know it was kind of weird. Like, <laughs> yeah, it was a little weird. <laughs> um, but I, I. I've said this, and and uh, I know a million other people have before me, so certainly this is my original, but comedians make such good dramatic actors. They do. Every time you take a good comedic actor and put him in a dra- dramatic role, like almost every time they knock it out of the park. That's true, yeah. Uh, yeah, that is true. You know which one of those I've been waiting for, and I hope mm-hmm. to God we get to see it one day, is I would love to see a really cool dramatic movie with Rick Moranis. <laughs> right, he might do it. He might. He's coming it. back to acting. That's what I've he's heard. Just waiting for a uh, for an opportunity. He's uh, excited about, according to an interview. This is our big chance, James. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of Rick Moranis, real quick before we go, we did um, we did uh, Crazy Heart recently. Yeah, Rick Moranis makes great country music. I yes, don't know if does. you've heard his music; it's fantastic. His album is called uh, the, "What the Agoraphobic Cowboy." Is that what it's called? Yeah, yeah. Agoraphobic <laughs> Cowboy, which is a great title. It is, um, and it, it's just really playful, fun, and good country music. It's really good. Yeah, agreed. <laughs> who, All right. Who would have so, a quick plug for Rick Moranis' music career, and also this is coming out before the uh, Crazy Heart episode, so a little oh, preview. Right, <laughs> <laughs> Spoiler alert: We're doing Crazy Heart <laughs> like two months from now. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing this out of sequence. <laughs> right. um, uh, I loved the Nutty Professor when I was a kid. Yeah, Did you see too. that? Yeah, me too. Did big time. Um, what I what I still remember really well is that you know moment that I thought was particularly funny is when he's his alter ego mm-hmm. and he's hitting on the woman at the bar and he just kisses his arm and then holds it out to her and goes, "Want some?" Yeah. Oh, <laughs> God. <laughs> so good. Um, I've heard that uh, Andrew Dice Clay was Ooh. just doing the Buddy Love character because he is kind of doing the oh thing, you know yeah. what I mean? It's, <laughs> and it's really very similar. <laughs> the amount of comics yeah. that I respect that talked about being blown away by Andrew Dice Clay's stand up. Yeah is bizarre is it because i've heard andrew dice clay's stuff and i've never been like this is good like i it's just never like reached me on any kind of intellectual level Uh but Patton oswald has said this and like a few other i think greg geraldo talked about loving when he was younger and like i'm just i guess there was something to when he was live probably or something very like raw and honest about it or something i don't get it i can see you know what i can see is is being in a crowd, I can see him being able to whip up a crowd very well because he had the whole yeah. catchphrases. You know, there was a point, you know, where he couldn't even finish his. Everyone was going, "What's in the bowl, bitch?" You know, that kind of shit. Is that a catchphrase? Yeah. Oh yeah, dude. Really? Oh yeah. <laughs> Little Miss Muffet sat on her tuffet, eating her curds and whey. Along came a spider, sat down beside her, said, "Hey, what's in the bowl, bitch?" That's a fucking joke. 
See, that's why I, I that's what makes me so confused. I know, this is not how about going case. like and then I was really moved and motivated by Angie Dice Clay. Like what what was happening? I know. I'm and then it's really the motivation of Andrew Dice Clay that led me to write my novel. Right. <laughs> which won the Pulitzer as we all know about. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> um, he did do, I will give you this uh, while we're talking about Andrew Dice Clay. If, if For have, some reason. If you have a chance, yeah, right. <laughs> if you have a chance, if you look up his album, I think of the whole thing's on YouTube, uh, The Day the Laughter Died, he did a live album. It's a double live album produced by Rick Rubin. Um, weird. Super weird. Where he goes to the comedy store in LA and he decides he's going to walk the room and it's he's not being funny he comes out and he's like by the time I leave here this whole room will be empty I guarantee it and he does like all this shit and eventually like he it just goes until the whole audience is gone now I'm not saying that that's funny or that's comedically viable at all but it is a it's a pretty interesting lesson if you get a chance that is an oddly um Experimental and artistic approach for someone who has a handful of uh, catchphrases. I thought so too. Yeah, it's it's interesting. Yeah, that's yeah. that is interesting. Yeah, it's worth a listen. Uh, speaking of the title, yeah, the day the laughter died, uh, we are about a little less than ten years away from getting Jerry Lewis's uh, hidden film, The Day the Clown Cried. Yes. Uh, is that what do you mean? Ten, ten years away from that. Oh, apparently he gave it to the um, uh, records, uh, the United States Google, and under the stipulation that it not be open for 10 years. He did so in 2015. Yikes. Yeah. (laughs) So uh, you got to wait until 2025. Now, the the supposed script was leaked uh, years ago and performed on stage oh. by people mm-hmm. uh, including like David Cross and Pat Oswald and Bob Odenkirk and stuff they used to do like screenings of it and then they got shut down after a little while right. uh, oddly enough not by Jerry Lewis apparently it was about like the, whatever guy wanted to make it into a movie oh something. weird huh. like a remake huh. uh, that's what I've heard Sweet. and uh, and so yeah so some people have read the script and it apparently is as bad as the description of this film is. We should probably explain what The Day the Clown Cried is, yeah. The Day the Clown Cried is Jerry Lewis' film about a clown working Auschwitz. Yep. I guess. Um, He's World War II and I think he actually is in in a concentration camp as a clown. I think so, yeah. That's yeah, funny. so the the title it sounds like life is beautiful. <laughs> it does, <laughs> which which had like a lot of fanfare, and then people hated two years later. I don't know. Right. There was like this complete backlash on that film. But I feel like I I enjoyed Life is Beautiful when I saw it. Yeah, um, it kind of is like Life is Beautiful. That's I never really made that connection. Yeah. It's kind of the same thing. Except he's not literally a clown in that. No, he's not. Like in this, he's actually clown makeup, right. shoes, and the nose, the whole <laughs> whole thing. And Life is Beautiful is one of those movies that I thought was deserving of the fanfare because they had to execute that so well for it not to seem idiotic. Yeah. Right. And I thought they did. Yeah. I mean, they had such clever ways of drawing the story back to itself and it sort of played on the kind of humor that was very popular at the time and and is is possibly still popular in, in, in Italy where it was made. I'm not sure, but to me it felt like a throwback to older, uh, older comedies right um so my my uh, my ardent hope and it's such a small <laughs> chance of this happening is that the day the clown cried is finally released and it's just executed so well right and it's this really great <laughs> film and all these hipster assholes yeah, yeah. Are making fun of it. <laughs> right i guess it's possible I maintain that any idea can be good if it's done well. Right. Every every idea that sounds horrible, if you do it well enough, could be a great film or book or movie or, or, or TV. 
Yeah, I think I, I think that's that's true. It, it does not seem though that this that's going to be the case with with this. <laughs> unfortunately, it, it, no. I think the if whole, anything, it, it sounds like like from the few people who've claimed to have seen it that it's even wor- like it's executed worse right. than you would imagine, oh. and the script is already really bad. Oh boy. I feel like, what if we find out it doesn't exist? Like, what if it's one of those things like it's like a <laughs> urban, le- oh, I've seen it. I know, well, I didn't see it, but this guy I know saw it. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> and just some guy like whipped up a screenplay real quick sure. and, and just like, yeah, threw it out there <laughs> saying it was this long lost Jerry Lewis thing. Uh, or it's a documentary. Right. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I don't know. Well, I guess we'll see. It, it is. It's got to be like one of the most notorious, you know, "quote unquote" lost f- films, right? I mean, you know, it, it's. I've been hearing about it forever, and I just can't imagine. Now, did it actually get finished? I believe so. Yeah, that's crazy. I think they made it and they just shelved it. God, that's ridiculous. I, I believe there's there's actually. Um, I believe there is a trailer you can see. If if we can find it, we'll put it up. Yeah, totally. Um, but yeah, there's. Uh, I be- I remember seeing a trailer. I'm not sure if it was sort of a fan made trailer where they just took images from Jerry Lewis films. Right. But they would have to find ones where he's a sad clown. So <laughs> yeah, that, that might exist. It might, yeah. I mean, <laughs> he's made so many damn movies, and like putting him in a circus sounds pretty plausible. Sure. The kind of films he was making. Sure. It's Jerry Lewis. This time he's an orderly. It's Jerry Lewis. Now he shoots out of a cannon. It's yep. Jerry Lewis. Now he's a bellboy. Yep. Jerry Lewis. Now he's on a ship. Jerry Lewis. Now he's a camp counselor. Jerry Lewis. <laughs> now he's an astronaut. Jerry like they just <laughs> now he's a pian- now he's a jazz piano player and it's sad. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's very much like that that South Park bit about the robot making screenplays. Right, right. And it's just they're just generic ideas. They throw Adam Sandler in it and everyone's like, yeah. I mean, Jerry Lewis was so huge that he would just make that just if Jerry Lewis does it, he was the number one draw. I think it was six years. Wow. In the United and four of those were consecutive. Wow. The number one draw in the United States. I mean, that's a, that's a pretty hefty, uh, pretty hefty feat. Sure. I mean, he was huge, you know, um, he and yeah, like you said, I mean, how much did Woody Allen take from his uh, from his films, you know, and, and every like I just watched uh, Don't Give Up the Ship, which is a film of his where he is a sea captain. And <laughs> but it was actually a real uh, pretty interesting movie, actually, if you get a chance to see it. It, it, it was a real story of a World War Two battleship that went missing and no one on the ship could remember like what had happened to it. It's kind of it's kind of vague in the film. I have to look, look it up again. But he plays like the captain who's like the first time captain of this, and hilarity ensues. You know, he slams <laughs> his hand in all kinds of things and makes a funny face. And uh, well, uh, Jerry Lewis did teach a filmmaking course. Oh, really? In L.A. for a little bit, yeah. Um, and I, I, there was a number of very famous directors that showed up to take the course, including Spielberg, apparently. Huh. Um, and I think it was sort of uh, he's teaching, but it's really him going like, here's my career, here's my thoughts on film. And he's so well respected among among people that grew up with him that a lot of people just went. And, and that's that's uh, my understanding based on the very limited bit I read about. Makes but. sense. Um, he had a very uh, <laughs> I don't know if you've seen any, especially later in his life. In, and it is kind of in Max Rose as well, a very odd way of speaking. I don't know how long I could listen to that. Yeah. He had a very like, like yeah. slurpy, whoa, well, that's more Jimmy Stewart. But you know, well, it, it's I, weird. I, that was one of the things I sort of appreciated about uh, Max Rose was that the old people acted like old people. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of films come out now where they have these old people, but they talk incredibly fast and they're very quippy and, and, and they kind of shoot off their, this one, a lot of the old people are, they're kind of struggling for the right yeah. word. 
weird and and they're very slow and they they give a lot of pauses yeah and their hands tremble mm-hmm. um is this is what this is what 80s and 90s look like this is not you know like a lot of these like alan alta and and morgan freeman are robbing a bank i know dude. and they're 80 <laughs> and it's funny because they're old i was thinking about <laughs> thinking about that the other day and they're going to vegas and they're getting drunk <laughs> no well, stop morgan freeman what why is he doing all these i'll be dead soon movies like he does like <laughs> the bucket list las vegas going in style like all this jesus christ this is just like there's that's like a genre of film it is. is like watch old people be funny yeah and i and i imagine a big audience for this is old people sure but i think a, a large audience is also the the sort of uh like uh, aren't I interesting for liking this old actor yeah. audience guy? You know, like yeah. like I'll go watch that piece of crap because he's in it, yeah. and and you know I can I can get that because a lot of these actors are phenomenal. Yeah. But I think most people who like their work aren't thinking that's their that's <laughs> right. The, yeah, you know, like I really <laughs> love Alan Alda. I really want to see this movie where he's a too big crime right. syndicate, you know, like, and it's just him making a fart joke in the middle, you know. I, <laughs> if I could get this thing to work, point to his oh, you know? wah, Yeah, you know that's wah. in there. You know that's in there. Yeah. <laughs> What's well, weird, that Going in Style movie is a remake of a George Burns movie that was pretty much exactly the same idea and he was quite old yeah. you know at the time and anyway yeah i guess it's always been a, uni- a kind of a i'm a fairly thing. certain and i don't know this for a fact i'm fairly certain george burns was always old he was born old yeah he was he was it was like a benjamin button like situation <laughs> so where he just younger? went from old to old <laughs> came out with a cigar yeah. <laughs> <laughs> bo, 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 bo. <laughs> say good night gracie uh, <laughs> yeah I mean, there's something, and I think it's, there's something about those old actors and old Hollywood stuff that is, what is it about that that is so fascinating? Maybe because it seems so different from how it is now. That's got to be part of it. And I think also there's, <clears throat> there is an honesty to it. Yeah. Um, now, I think a lot of people our age uh, and younger have this feeling of like being betrayed by their heroes because right. they go like, Oh, they're such good people. And then they find out some horrible thing they did and they go, Oh no, right. I respected them so much. Like Joss Whedon right now. Oh yeah. yeah that's um, right. And that's our problem. That's yeah. us. We, pretending that people are these perfect beings of, right. that have no sin, that have no hypocrisy, especially highly successful people. Right. But you go back to the Rat Pack, yeah. these guys were openly racist idiots. <laughs> like they, they, didn't, they made no no allusions to this. And, and, and so now you actually hear about stories where Sinatra... Okay, so there's one story, and Sinatra... Yeah beat the crap out of some guy to get his money back. And you go, yeah, that's what Sinatra's doing. Right. And you hear another story where Sinatra refuses to perform if Sammy Davis Jr. isn't allowed in the exact same wing as the rest of the Rat Pack. And you go, that's phenomenal. That's so cool. Um, And it's so cool because you didn't put him up on some platform where he had to always do that. So so next, you know, he demands that. They will not perform. And then they go perform and they're calling him in the N-word and they're making jokes about, you know. Oh, yeah. There's such an honesty about the flawed individual back then in Hollywood. It seems I don't know. Maybe maybe it's only we can only think that because we can look at it in retrospect when all the facts are out. It's been, yeah, it's been so long. I wonder. Yeah, if people yeah. felt the same way then. I, it is it is pretty crazy because I always for some reason whenever I think of like a nice Hollywood guy now I think of Chris Pratt because he does genuinely seem nice and I bring him up a lot. But you know he's getting there. Him and his wife are getting divorced. And I'm just like reading all this stuff about it, people being like, oh, they seem so happy, blah, 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 this and that, which you always hear. It's like, yeah, well, that's what you saw. You know, these people have 
teams of people <laughs> that make sure that's what you see, you know, and, and people get divorced, dude. Like I, it's, and, and, yeah, and like, what, who was that one couple that kept showing up to Mimir's fighting, right? And, like, throwing shit at each other, exactly, and cursing, and then they got a divorce, and everyone was like, "Makes sense, yeah, yeah that's gonna happen." <laughs> Although I would Constantly love that. bickering and and making those little slights at each other, right? Yeah, no, that would be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I guess just Roseanne and Tom Arnold is pretty. Yeah, the, last. I guess that's it. <laughs> uh, the last vestiges of old Hollywood, Roseanne and Tom Arnold. Um, there's also, I think, there's this um, this concept of, of uh, nostalgia for a time that didn't exist. I know a lot of right. people have this sort of like that's when men were men and women were women, and I don't personally see it that way. No. Kind of silly. No. You know, it's it's things things change. Um, you know. Yeah, that was men, men were real men and abusive. Yeah, women were real women and didn't want to vote. And they shut their mouths for once. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, that's. I'm sure there. <laughs> I'm sure there are very few women who are saying that. <laughs> didn't want to vote. My thing. Well, no, just like very few women who were like, "Oh, it was so much better back then." That's no, that's a thing. Really? Well, yeah, like like uh, back when there was glamour. Oh, you know, okay. Like the beautiful hairstyles mm-hmm. and the the natural. There are people that wax nostalgic about the South during the Civil War. Jesus Christ, yeah. I guess <laughs> Look at their pretty dresses <laughs> and all the makeup and the the wraparound porches and the savannah. Yeah. Like there are people like, Let's ignore all the There's some stuff that was bad Let's ignore yeah. those <laughs> Countless hundreds of people being deprived life Let's just But look at the track But like, look at Montgomery no Cliff yeah. yeah I guess that's true <laughs> uh, I, I should stop being surprised by things I think <laughs> <laughs> I think there's a great uh, Quote uh, I don't know who said it, but it always stuck with me. And it was, uh, you'll never go broke underestimating people. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I think uh, our times now more than ever. Uh-huh. Are, uh, uh, yeah, that's pretty much the case. That's probably people true. People aren't letting you down in the letting you down department. Right. Well, speaking of, of, of letting down, uh, <laughs> I did kind of, I was, because I was fascinated by, I'm always fascinated by teams by bands and that their last kind of, you know, for example, the Beatles, you know, the not spe- performance. Yeah. And- not speaking to each other. And, you know, oh, okay. well, you know, all, all, all that stuff. And, and one of the stories I heard about, um, Martin and Lewis is, is at the end of their, their partnership, you know, there was all kinds of screaming and yelling and there always was, apparently there was quite a contentious relationship they had, uh, all kinds of screaming and yelling. And when it was over, you know, it was late at night and Jerry Lewis called, called uh, Dean Martin, you know, and said, you know, after all that, um, you know, there was one thing that I think we had and something I, I think people always saw, and that was love. And Dean Martin said, um, when you looked at me, you might have seen love, but when I looked at you, I saw fucking dollar signs. <laughs> <laughs> is this is this uh, documented? Like, this definitely occurred, I believe it's something it's that he himself legend. said. As, uh, yeah, a story that he himself relayed. I could be wrong, but I, I think it's interesting... Because to me, he does come off as, in their act, as just wanting, you know, and that's the whole thing, is wanting to be cool, wanting to be mm. like Dean. You know, some of their sketches were, there's one where he, you know, Dean Martin's like a personal trainer at a gym, and he's he, he's coming in to work out, you know, and, cause, and that's so much of their mm. comic foil is, is that, you know. And I wonder how much of that was... You know, came from something real, or if if it was a mutually mutually like, all right, like you're the straight man and I'm the f- fucking idiot, <laughs> you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There is a uh, sometimes, at least, there's a, a a desire for comedic people to be taken seriously, right? And and Jerry Lewis was an incredibly smart person, very creative person, hardworking person, and the fact that he was generally just saw as this prat you know, the slapstick comic of, of very little worth. Yeah. Uh, uh, but that created the fantastic joke of they love me in frames. That was really based on Jerry Lewis. 
What's his it? not being accepted here in France fucking love him. <laughs> and that became like a like a thing people say. I'm big in France. They oh, love interesting. Me. That's like a joke. That's Jerry Lewis. Really? Mm-hmm. Oh, I, I, I assumed... Uh, I assumed you would know that. No. Oh well, hmm. I know I didn't know. You know, if, if, if you never, so that it sounded like a pretentious. If you asshole. if you underestimate people, you'll never go broke. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you knew that. I thought everyone hmm. knew that. Well, I yeah. thought it's not even. I'm, Apologize for that moment. No, no, there. no, no, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Every night, I I can't like. I can't avoid those moments of that where I say something you're like, oh my God, that sounded fucking horrible. Really <laughs> well, James, this, this is like, this happens so goddamn much. Well, James, you know, I don't know about you. When I looked at you, I saw fucking dollar signs. So. <laughs> <laughs> I was, uh, I was talking to someone and, uh, and he was, he's in a band and he was some of his lyrics mm-hmm. and he was telling me some of the lyrics that he wrote Ooh. and he was like, you know, they, you know, they're sort of, he referred to it as smart, but stupid. Okay. And I'm like, I'm like, oh, so, so sort of almost like a stand up of the genre you're you're writing in. And he goes like, nah. And I go like, oh, well, I, I would say like, you know, I hope this is a compliment. I even said that. But I like Rocky Horror Picture Show and the lyrics sort of reminded me of lyrics in the Rocky Horror Picture Show. And he, he kind of like grimaces and he's like, oh, I hate the Rocky Horror Aww. Picture Show. And I was just like, well, I'm digging my grave further and further. <laughs> like, there's no, nothing I can do here. Yep. And, I, uh, and I was struck mostly by just how often this seems to happen. Yeah. I can't get out of these situations. <laughs> So I just say anything, I'll be like, that's a good hat. My father died in this hat. Oh, what <laughs> Why are you wearing it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> yeah. I know. Well, it's just just do, you know, like what I do. I just don't talk to anyone. <laughs> just a hole up in my room. I try so hard. I know. I try so hard to never communicate with people. You got to go outside sometimes, I guess. Yeah. It's a bummer. Mm-hmm. And then the internet makes it so easy to be, to, to interact with dumb, just out of constant. Uh, it's just. Yeah. Jerry Lewis. Yes. <laughs> well, it was interesting too. Speaking, speaking of the internet, I, my wife mentioned this to me and I don't know if, if you felt the same way, but I felt that when he, when he died, he, I guess I felt like he was a bigger star than that, but I just really didn't, I didn't see a whole lot. I didn't see any tearful tributes to him. Like, like when Don Rickles died, I didn't see any, mm. any of that. And I thought that was interesting. Jerry Lewis really fell out of America's, uh, limelight yeah. a long time ago to the point where he was kind of made into a joke. A little bit. And I think it's a little bit, um, a little bit unfortunate. There's that scene in four rooms that Tarantino, um, just goes on that big monologue about how brilliant Jerry Lewis was and how innovative and how it's a crime, but he's only appreciated in France. He mentions, right. and then that once he dies, people will tell, will say what, what a genius he was. And maybe they will, uh, time will tell, but like, there is something about he did do some really amazing stuff early in his career. Yeah. Um, maybe he just lived too damn long. Could be. Maybe people thought yeah. he was already dead. <laughs> you know, I, I, I did see a, a tweet. I believe the author was Pat Oswald's brother, um, where he said, uh, I'm still re I'm still recovering from the, from learning that Jerry Lewis was alive yesterday. Oh, that's kind of, um, uh, yeah, I don't really like these dead <laughs> celebrity jokes. Yeah. Um, but, but I think that was pointing out that he hasn't done a lot that people have cared about in a long time. It's true. And mostly the, because Don Rickles was still performing. Yeah, he was, that's true. Yeah, he was. And he, and he was still doing that caustic, mean spirited humor that was very rare <laughs> and, and sort of just him. Yeah, my favorite joke, dude, is, and it's so simple. It's not even really a joke, but he just kind of go down to the guy in the front row and he goes, Is this your wife? The guy goes, Yeah, he goes, Jesus Christ. <laughs> It's not even a joke. It makes me laugh. Yeah. I don't that was a, that was a lot of like the jokes that really made me laugh. They aren't really right. jokes. <laughs> it's just like at one point I remember uh, he was on a talk show and this woman kept like interrupting and and he and he, he goes like just go go stand over there and try and figure out how you got this job. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I wonder, and maybe you know, he he did seem uh, fairly caustic 
a little abrasive and maybe Lewis. yeah didn't have a whole lot of friends i wonder uh, I, I, I i i that is i was wondering uh, a moment ago like if that was maybe a cause that, that he burned so many bridges yeah. um he didn't rewear socks whoa he would uh that's my wear dream. socks once that's my dream and then Donate them to charity oh, after well, he wore them once. That's kind of weird. <laughs> it is, I guess, like like he would donate them to the goodwill. Or oh, okay. All right. Yeah, yeah. It was it wasn't donating them to Meals on Wheels. Was, <laughs> selling them in Japan. So confused about. <laughs> They're like, we got another pair. Okay, thank you. <laughs> no, thank you, the, Mr. Lewis. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, dude, that's my dream. Why, lady with <laughs> okay, the yes. Yeah. <laughs> nice lady. Um, okay, all right. Thank you. <laughs> we remembered that. Yeah. Uh, fun back then. <laughs> he, uh, he would uh, give away suits hmm. rather than wear them again. Right. So, like, if you wore one at a thing and then he would just given to someone huh. uh, i wonder if there was some ocd-ness to that or just like but that is also the kind of money he had yeah well and also he, he was nominated for a nobel peace prize was that for his telephones yep that's cool yeah he i remember those man that was like my my growing up is those fucking telethons that was my, here's uh, uh speaking of twitter yeah. like like that joke was a little insensitive here's the dumbest thing i may have ever read <laughs> okay. and given the internet that's a pretty big deal yeah. is someone was basically shitting on jerry lewis's telethons and he goes like they raised like a billion dollars but did they cure anything like where'd that money really go like that's how diseases work. Yeah, <laughs> like, you throw enough okay, money, guys, I can cure it. We 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 got a hundred thousand dollars. We're good. No more tuberculosis. We're good. That's fucking crazy. <laughs> yeah, that's just people are the worst. They are. They are. Uh, yeah, he was nominated for. A, I've never seen a telephone. Before. Really? The only the only the the I know they exist. Mm-hmm. But I largely know they exist from uh, pop culture references like The Simpsons when oh. um, Krusty's doing the telephone for motion sickness. Right, right. Um, but like, yeah. And by the way, apparently Krusty's a lot of his offstage stuff was based on Jerry Lewis. Oh, really? Yeah. Huh. That's apparently Jerry Lewis was, you know, I'm a clown. And then he gets off stage like, get this ring and everything. You know, right, right. It's scotch. <laughs> cool. <laughs> um yeah i i just uh yeah they're pretty weird man because they he would always have like uh he would sing a song and he could not sing but he i think he fancied himself a singer and uh, Uh, he he released uh, an album uh of him singing and it got to like number 10 on the chart really i uh, maybe this was when he was much older so he had like old person singing voice no i'm pretty sure it was uh when he was sort of at the height of his fame Uh so i mean there was bound to be stuff sold anyway but i think really the idea that he couldn't sing came from the fact that he was singing in character right quite often could be is, is what i read i've never heard him sing one way or the other i don't remember Totally. Um, he was also, uh, I don't know if there's a, there's a sketch that they did for like the <laughs> Martin and Lewis Colgate hour, the Colgate comedy the Colgate hour. Comedy I, hour. I wanted to bring that. I still find that so weird whenever I see these sponsored shows from yeah. back in the fifties and sixties and how that's just not a thing anymore. It's not the, the, the last vestige of that was the Disney like family movies would right. happen on ABC when I was a kid. Right. That was the closest that I, but they actually make entertainment. Yeah. It wasn't like, yeah, yeah. like toothpaste. <laughs> I know. <laughs> That's so odd. Also, one of my favorite songs, uh, also it, it is, it is suggested. It is the first use of guitar distortion recorded. Okay. Um, which is, um, it was uh, Les Paul and Mary Ford. Oh yeah, um, and it was uh, the sunshine uh, waiting on the sunshine. I've seen that. It's a great song, and it was it was given to the world by. And it was like, here's Colgate paid for this, and, like, and then they just give the song. It's this. Um, when was the last time my toothpaste did anything for me right. other than clean my teeth? Right. They, they just put out this amazing song. That's so weird. Yeah. <laughs> you don't. It's it was Clorox. It was Clorox, Clorox. I think that paid for that one. It's so weird. you don't see that 
I mean, you see it, but it's it's much more. Uh, uh, These goddamn corporations. Yeah, they they sitting on their laurels recently because they they're doing just the job. Yeah, they, they gotta, need to start putting out film and movies, yeah. and, doing variety hours. Yeah, I wonder if part of that stopped because it was just like they put out something. It would be like you know, you know Borax's Comedy Hour, starring you know Jimmy Wendell or right. something. And then like a week later, Jimmy Wendell's arrested for like killing a bunch of people or something. Right. And so there's oh, right. Borax would like to apologize. <laughs> it's a, a ventriloquist, and they find out a week later he's been fucking the puppet. Like oh, okay, <laughs> yeah. all right, X nay, no uh, more. But here at the Barox, people do not condone. Yeah, yeah. Does not just uh, <laughs> not speak for. <laughs> we are going to be donating money to an anti-puppet fucking fund. The one that's like, yay! <laughs> Finally, someone yeah. recognizes us. We've been needing some we- help. <laughs> so long. No more laughing at me now, huh, mom? <laughs> I don't know if that was the anti-puppet fucking yeah. person talking or the guy fucking the puppets because it really could have been either. I mean, it sounds like they both have mommy issues. I mean, no yeah, matter well, that's what I'm saying. No yeah, matter what, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but man. I'm sorry, the, the Colgate Comedy Hour. Um, Keeper, I totally interrupted you because I just no, it's so fine. Uh, shit, although I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, it's fine, although it did derail. Yeah, I apologize. <laughs> no, um, shit. What was it? What was it? It's not important. Clearly, okay. otherwise I would remember. Um, yeah, it is. It is weird. You know, I would love. I love those old, like, uh, you know the the Paul Lynn Variety Hour. You know, where they would just do like one off. I wish they would still. They would still do that. I think that would be so. Interest, such interesting. They, they try. Do they? There's always there's been so many attempts. I remember growing up because I want to like variety hours. Yeah, I don't really. Right. Um. I the, like the sort of Sunny and Cher, Tracy Ullman. Yeah. Um. Th- they've tried those so many times growing up. I remember there's so many failed attempts at these old fashioned variety hour shows and I'd watch them because I'm like, man, I really want to enjoy this, right. but I didn't generally like the music that was played. Well, yeah. And the sketch sketch is one of those things, sketch shows and sketches. There's probably three shows that I've ever really liked sketch wise. And they're usually very kind of dark. Right. Like I love kids in the hall. Sure. And uh, Keenan and Keenan Peel. Keenan and Cal. Um, <laughs> they didn't have their own sketch show, did they? Uh, they had a sitcom. Um, but like, so I want to like Variety Hours because they seem like such a cool yeah. concept. Right. But mm, the closest Variety Hour I think I've ever liked is when I was in Vegas. I saw Absinthe, and it was the greatest show. What is it ever? It's uh, it's a parody, basically a parody of Vegas shows. Okay. So they do all the kind of Vegas show stuff, but in this sort of tongue in cheek, uh-huh. darkly dark humor style. Oh, that's cool. So the the host is this guy with a codpiece, so it looks like his he's just got a bulge in his pants uh-huh. <laughs> and a thin and a pencil thin mustache and a comb over. Beautiful. And he's got like a gut sticking out, and he calls himself uh, the Bazillionaire. Uh-huh. I think is, is the name of <laughs> his. his he's, he's the MC. <laughs> and he'll just go on just you know like he just does the most like offensive crowd work right it's very obviously jokey like i remember him pointing at me and being like oh we got a mexican anyone need their lawn done you know like that kind of stuff <laughs> right right and then and then for example though but they go into all the so they still have the acts like before they had the contortionist gymnast people that were doing all the amazing things sure. that they do he comes out and he just kind of goes foo fa 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 fla foo fla and he's got all this ridiculous music and he's doing fake uh, croissant uh-huh. and he's just you know doing a parody of uh, of uh, the Cirque du Soleil right oh right right and and it was it was fantastic. I loved it. Oh, maybe great. it was because I was drunk and in Vegas, but I thought sure. it was fantastic. <laughs> if you're ever in Vegas, yeah. go watch. It's worth it. It's worth it. Go watch Absinthe. They're a sponsor. We're very proud to have them as a sponsor. <laughs> oh my god, I would I would murder someone <laughs> if I could have them as a sponsor. I would go to Vegas weekly and we watch could, their show. James, we could have anyone as a sponsor. We just don't get paid for it. 
We can oh, okay. Pick, take your pick. I don't think that's how that works. I think they could send us a cease and desist letter. This could be the Colgate, James Flutie, and Michael J. O'Connor hour. <laughs> <laughs> Today. Today we could make that happen. Underrated with James Flutie and thank God I'm brought to you by Colgate. Brought to you by Stridex. Yeah. When you need your weights to be pearly white, go there. Oh, God. <laughs> Some announcer that we just keep over there. <laughs> He's pretty drunk, so um, we have to. Com- we like in the contract, we have to comment on every actor's teeth. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I felt there. I felt Jack Black's teeth could have been whiter. Could have been. Could have used Trident. <laughs> <laughs> just a touch of Colgate. <laughs> That's my Colgate. America's just a touch of Colgate and Helen Hunt's pearly whites could have been blinding you. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear I'm telling you dude we can make it happen <laughs> <laughs> right you're congressman <laughs> oh dear well um, so where do we land on, on Jerry Lewis are we fans I, 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 I think that I, he, he created something that uh, he cre- basically Jim Carrey has been doing Jerry Lewis his entire career <laughs> I mean they look that alike is, that is, it's funny that it took us this long to even bring that up it is, yeah. Yeah, he was the he's the Jerry the, the Simpsons even made that exact same joke. Oh, did they? Oh, really? They show the future and they're walking out of this Jerry Lewis and they're this this uh, Jim Carrey uh, screening uh-huh. and they're talking about him like some great artist. Now that time has passed and and this sort of what Jerry Lewis was. He was the the goofy comedy guy. But then when people look back, they went like, oh, that was actually some really that is kind of what stuff happened. There. Mm-hmm. Yeah, huh, interesting. Now, the difference being the reason that I think, you, as you said, there wasn't fanfare as much is that there was also a group of people who just goes, no, he was just dumb. Mm-hmm. Um, and also, Charlie Chaplin was praised for being a genius while also doing comedy. Like, there was no sort of like, they had to appreciate him later. I see. Charlie Chaplin was also directing and starring and writing and composing his own uh, music. Um, and he was being appreciated both then and after. Mm-hmm. And then there was a little bit of a fall off when he started marrying his cousin. I think it was. Sure. Sure. And he made the great dictator. And somehow people thought that was like him sympathizing yeah. with Nazis, which is the most backwards way of reading that. Film. As I, as I, as I slowly take down my, my giant Charlie Chaplin screen print, right? I have right here. I don't think you oh, can yeah. see it. I have a huge one. Right here. <laughs> I'm like, oh, right. Yeah. Man, weird, right? <laughs> <laughs> I, the the whole thing that that like somehow this this was like some Marxist move on his part to make the great dictator is the most confounding concept. Like he spent two hours making fun of. Hitler making him this comedic idiot and then spends the last like 10 minutes giving this heartfelt beautifully written speech about the the wonders of democracy right. and then people saw that and went commie yeah oh yeah that's insane yeah it is well you know it's like uh the the urban legend that um Hitler wore that mustache because he was such a huge Charlie Chaplin fan have you ever heard <laughs> it's that not an actual uh-huh. fan. yeah 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 and it's funny one of the My- one of the times I saw that online some other one of the comments was no Hitler thought Charlie Chaplin was a Jew and should have been destroyed <laughs> and that you know when you look at it like when you take a step back you're like what fucking of course yeah what <laughs> I uh I um my friend uh, Aram and I, maybe we'll have him on as a guest, mm. guest at some point. We used to love making up fake before the internet did this right. on a daily basis. We made up fake interesting facts. We right. did it like we would just kind of throw them out there. And we found that the most effective ones involved Hitler. Like Weird. the ones that people readily believed. And I remember the one that I found most people most likely just kind of went like, oh, that's crazy, was, uh, <laughs> did you know Hitler invented tater tops? <laughs> How weird. Because he was a vegetarian. Right. And he, like, would try and find different ways of cooking potatoes. Makes sense. That makes sense. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> the Autobahn, television, <laughs> and tater tots. And tater tots. Well, he was an artist, you know. <laughs> <laughs> was he? <laughs> well, apparently not much of one. <laughs> oh, God. Is, is, what was it? 
<laughs> I remember the the absolute nonsense of people comparing Obama to to Nazis. Uh, I don't know if you ever saw those booths that would go up like in the city. No. Uh, I used to, okay, I used to live in San Francisco, and they'd have these booths, and it would have. Obama with a Hitler mustache oh. and then they just be there waiting for you and at one point my curiosity uh, drove me over there and I walk over and I ask him like why is Obama like Hitler right. and he goes like uh, well he's trying to destroy Medicare and that's like a genocide and I went no he's not and also no it's not right um, but but the, the one that said it like that really you in and I heard pundits even say where they're like, well, Hitler tried to make a universal medical thing. And I'm like, and, and I'm like, is that what Hitler was remembered for? Yeah, really. Is I mean, that what, like, to point it, to, like, like, why is Obama like Hitler? Well, because uh, of his thoughts on trade between Russia and the Ukraine. Like, right. what are you pointing? If Obama didn't systematically kill people and start a world war, he's not like Hitler. Right, right. <laughs> well, you know, Hitler also smoked cigarettes in his yes, Hitler was a big fan of uh, the Mets. Yeah, loved basketball. <laughs> so basically. Basically, so pretty much tomato, tomato. Kind of like the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, you, you know, I'm derailing off of Jerry Lewis. Yeah, uh, it's, it's it's fun. We'll do it. I think we should edit Hitler talk in general. In general, just take that one out. We'll take it all out and we'll put it in a uh, a best of because boy, he comes up a lot on this damn thing. <laughs> I really, I, I need to follow my own advice and learn more about history just so I don't use Hitler as a, as right. a, right. As a metaphor <laughs> or a comparison. Well, he's to funny. Going like, he's funny. So, you know. You know, Pol Pot. <laughs> you know, I need to go to other. Yeah. <laughs> just shaking my head at myself right now. You're fine, James. It's no problem. I'll take out the Hitler stuff. <laughs> 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 well, uh, so yeah, Jerry Lewis. Uh, um, uh, Jerry Lewis, funny, funny, uh, funny dude, man. And I, I, I just uh, that. Phys- I think one of the things that I've heard and I and I completely agree with is that physical comedy will always hold up. It's like the kind of thing you can watch it with the sound off. Babies like it. Old people like it. <laughs> it doesn't matter if it's in black and black or white. It doesn't matter if you're black or white. Um, uh, that, that is probably part of the reason why his his comedy translated to France. Probably right. Didn't speak a word of French, but he won like the French Medal Legion honor. Like he won like all these awards. They really loved him there. Yeah. And physical comedy can translate. Probably part of the reason why Life Is Beautiful that we mentioned earlier became a worldwide phenomenon because so much of that had the timing of the physical moments. Uh, yeah, I mean the cleverness. Yeah, you know, it's uh, people will always laugh when Kramer comes busting in the door. You know, that's always. I think that that's all. There's something visceral and, and prolific about the, not prolific. I'm sorry, profound about that. You know, where uh, that it, it, it's it's the peekaboo. You know, it's it's <laughs> it's the same it's the same thing. It's and uh, boy, that's, I remember uh, hearing a uh, audio commentary with Ricky Gervais. And, and, you know, he pokes his head out in the movie and, and Ricky Gervais says, I always find it funny when a person just pokes their head out yeah. from around a corner. And I realize that's not even a childish sense of humor. That's a toddler yeah. sense of humor. Yeah. <laughs> like next, I'm just going to be laughing at jingling keys. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> and uh, <laughs> there are there are things that I, I agree where, where there is this, this sense of like, why do I find that funny? Yeah. That really shouldn't be as funny as I'm finding it. Yeah, yeah, it, it is. It's visceral. It's it's uh, it's it's primal. You know, the people, someone falling down is always it's always funny, man. <laughs> it's about to go on a tangent that was only barely related to what was just said again. <laughs> what is wrong with me, James? You're fine. You're too hard on yourself. Uh, I'm sorry. I just, I just want to apologize to everyone and to Jerry Lewis. <laughs> this was supposed to be about you. We spent most of it talking about Colgate and Hitler. <laughs> That's all right, man. <laughs> Jerry Lewis has a career that spanned like 60 years. Yeah. He was the number one draw. He was nominated for a Nobel Prize. He was 
changed the way filming was done by inventing a way to work with cameras. Yep. He is was beloved in multiple countries, and he's completely overrated. 100% overrated. Uh, started with Martin and Lewis when he was 19 years old. Good God. By so the time they broke up, 60. By the time they broke up, he wasn't even uh, 30 yet. Uh, Good God! Yeah, and and went on to have an insane, insane career. Even making a, uh, I thought at the very least, if not fantastic, a uh, very interesting and watchable movie. Max Rose, right at the end of his life, uh, totally watchable and enjoyable, and uh, and just a hundred percent overrated. <laughs> so well, I didn't realize he started at nineteen. Yeah, when they or, got or he got that success at nineteen. Yeah. you really can't hold anything against him then. No. Like, yeah, he might have been a crazy jerk, but he became super famous at 19. Right. Who wouldn't become a crazy jerk? Immediately had so much money. Like you were saying, throwing it out the window. I mean, yeah. I mean, listen, if I, when I was younger, I was an idiot. Sure. Like most people would say the same thing about themselves. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, you have a great song about that, by the way. Do I, I went to your, 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 if you knew me before now. Oh, yeah, yeah. New one. Yeah, yeah. That's great. That's oh, phenomenal. Thanks. Anyway. Go listen to Mikey's uh, <laughs> the sound uh, band camp. Yeah, Michael J. O'Connor dot Yeah, it's, it's great. <laughs> You're a ph- phenomenal musician. Oh, thank you. But uh, if I became famous, yeah. If I like, I thought the world revolved around me. Totally. How horrible would it be if other people agreed? I know. <laughs> if they were just going like, yeah, it totally does, James. Yeah. We're all just waiting to see what you do. <laughs> like, oh God, I've yeah. been so much worse. People are so surprised. Justin Bieber, that guy's an asshole. Yeah, of course he is. He doesn't being remember famous at twelve. He doesn't remember not being famous. <laughs> like, <laughs> the Olsen twins, they're fucked up. They're really <laughs> fucked up. They got to get it together. Like they were famous babies. Yeah, I'm. I'm. Oh, I'm not judgmental of when like child stars go crazy. Mm. I'm just fascinated and confused when they don't. Totally. When Neil Patrick Harris remained a like very grounded yeah. human being, Elijah Wood. I was like, whoa, yeah, weird. Totally. <laughs> uh, Blossom, how did you not go crazy? <laughs> You went and got a degree? What the hell? Yeah, I know. Finished college. <laughs> Weird. What's wrong with you? God. What? Let's go. Let's go meet their parents and learn how to fix the world. Yeah, <laughs> seriously. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So your son was gay and super famous at an incredibly young age and sort of ostracized from the rest of the country and he just continued being in all the arts and is a wonderful human being and everyone loves him yeah everyone loves him yeah he's the Who new does? uh yeah think about that like like a uh, like a famous person that everyone loves he's kind of the new like tom hanks like everyone loves tom hanks and like everyone uh, loves hanks, patrick harris the rock yeah mhm and uh, nph yeah yeah yeah, those are those are three good ones. Goodens <laughs> and us, James. I would I would tell you I I think the Rock, if he ran for president, would have a really good chance of winning. It would not be like, it would not be a long <laughs> shot. That's for sure. And that's the thing. It's just, it's just like if we were gonna have a celebrity uh, president, which we have now, uh, and I guess maybe Reagan. We had with Reagan. Yeah. Couldn't we have chosen one that was universally liked and made like. Like movies, right? <laughs> like right. not a reality show. Someone Couldn't fun. we have gotten with like a Tom Hanks? Can we? I would. I would be. I would be still upset that Tom Hanks won because like that's a position that's too important. Yeah, but at least I'd be like, ah, it's Tom Hanks. <laughs> How angry can you get at Tom Hanks? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and then even if Tom Hanks had the exact same, like had had positions that I hated. I think I'd still be if Tom Hanks was just like we're gonna put a ban and we're we're not, no more women in the military. We can't have them. Yeah. Just we just I just I'd be like let's hear him out. Yeah, <laughs> dude, big, <laughs> big, a league of their own. Come on, come on, a league of their own. <laughs> Maybe he has a good rap. Have you seen Philadelphia? He can sell some good. He can sell some stuff. Good movie. Good movie. <laughs> this guy can do comedy. He can do drama. He can kick people out of the military. Let him do it. <laughs> He's fine. He's Tom Hanks. Just let him. Just let him look at him. Ah. <laughs> oh man. Well, uh, uh, Jerry Lewis is, is uh, was fantastic, and and he'll be he'll be missed. 
Uh, he, he, and I know, I know you asked if, if I was a fan. Yeah. And I almost want to say, like, does it matter? I mean, look yeah. at this dude. I know. Like, it doesn't matter what people think of him. He he was phenomenal. Yep. Objectively, yep. had a phenomenal career. Yep. Made it to his nineties. I mean, you don't, you can't ask for for much more than that. So, and did a lot of good. Hundreds. And, yeah. You can ask for that. Absolutely. Uh, so yeah. Just being a jerk. Just being a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, well, um, Stay with us. Uh, we got a new subject coming up next month. Yeah. Trash cinema. Trash cinema. These, uh, we've recorded uh, some of these episodes already, mm -hmm. and they're some of my favorites. They're really, really Same fun. Here. So uh, I look forward to, to having you guys hear those, hearing your thoughts. Yep. It's a, it's a fun one. And uh, uh, thank you to everyone that follows the Facebook page and, and stuff like that and downloads it on uh, iTunes or Stitcher, things like that. Yeah, numbers are going up. So be on the ground floor yeah. for this <laughs> huge tidal wave of fame we're heading towards. Before it crashes and burns and we get too big for our britches mm -hmm. yep. i am only slightly less dumb than i was when i was a child so l let's see my de-evolution into a crazy person i bought a I'm plane celebrity. yesterday i've already bought i did it that was a bad decision on your part look I at know, that right that was a bad decision <laughs> i can't afford that i can't even fly weird weird thing to do. i have filed divorce on my wife oh. still love her She's the most important person to me in the world. I just figure if I become famous, it's just what you do. Yeah, don't take a risk. Why don't, Why risk it? Yeah. Yeah, I agree. You got you to gotta preempt. You bought a plane before you could afford it. I divorced my wife before it was... A, it was always going to be a bad idea. It was always going to be a bad idea. <laughs> I, before I even met the model that was going to take advantage of me for my money. Right, right. I already did it. James, James, she hasn't been born yet. <laughs> oh, creep. That's not my joke. It's an old joke. I'm sorry. So sorry. We'll end it there so that way I look worse. How about that? <laughs> so until next right. time. Thank you, guys. I'm Michael James J. O'Connor. Oh, I said it over you. Sorry. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, that's James Flutie. <laughs> that's Michael J. O'Connor. We'll see you guys next week. <laughs>